these lessons are part of my software that you can purchase on flashbrainanatomy.com the link is down there below in the description please check it out and in this lesson I will illustrate the brainstem from the dorsal point of view and I will explain you some basic stuff about the, the brainstem and its parts I will also it will not include the functional anatomy just the morphology if you are interested in learning more about the functional anatomy you should check out my website that is down there in the description okay so first there is a part called the medulla oblongata which means the extended spinal cord of course down there we have the spinal cord and from 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 this point over here where is the decussation of pyramids it is the decussation of pyramids where the fibers change their sides we have a cortex of the brain and the fibers come through here they, they go through pyramids and then at this point they change sides almost 80 percent of them and they go down their spinal cord and right exactly on that point we say that the spinal cord ends and the medulla oblongata begins which means extended spinal cord so medulla oblongata is one part of the brainstem the spinal cord does not belong to the brainstem at the medulla oblongata you can notice the cuneate nucleus here or the cuneate tubercle and you can notice the gracile tubercle down there we have the cuneate fasciculus and the gracile fasciculus okay to learn more about the details of the medulla oblongata and to learn more about each sulci and its structures you should check out my software on flashbrainanatomy.com However, I will continue to talk about the brainstem. Now I will illustrate the fourth ventricle, the rhomboid fossa. And this space over here is the fourth ventricle. It's a part of the ventricular system. And there are peduncles, the cerebellar peduncles, as you can see here. Those are simply the nerve fibers the bundle of nerve fibers that leave and enter the cerebellum so this is the middle cerebellar peduncle this is the superior one and this is the inferior one they also create the borders borders of the fourth ventricle here I also created many videos about fourth ventricle you should check out my website down there in the description flashbrainanatomy.com and now I will continue to talk about the brainstem so this this was already a second part of the brainstem and it's called the pons so we had the medulla oblongata now we have the pons and the third part of the brainstem is the mesencephalon on mesencephalon you can notice the superior colliculi here and here and the inferior colliculi here and here the inferior ones are important for the auditory reflexes and the superior ones are important for visual reflexes of the brain if you watched my videos about the auditory pathways and or visual pathways the optic tract you will understand why these why these colliculi are important, why superior ones are important for the visual uh, reflexes and, and the inferior ones are important for the auditory reflexes. So there you go, you have the mesencephalon here, you have the pons and you have the medulla oblongata, the three parts that create or make, make the brainstem. Now I mentioned one more part, I thought I talked about cerebellum and cerebellum is does not belong to the, to the brain stem okay and here you have the cerebellar peduncles so cerebellum is simply attached on these 
nerve fibers those are bundles of nerve fibers they come through here okay we made a cut here and we took the cerebellum off and I will illustrate that at the end of the video I will illustrate the cerebellum and the way it's being cut first I illustrated some more things that I would like to point out and that is that here we have the thalamus and here we also have the thalamus and those are already parts of the diencephalon. They do not belong to the to the mesencephalon, to the midbrain, uh, and 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 they are usually not not considered a part of the brainstem. Okay, here this is the the medial geniculate body, and this is the lateral geniculate body. The superior one. The superior uh, colliculi go to the lateral genetic body the fibers from here. The inferior colliculi is connected with the the medial geniculate body. This part here is the pineal gland. It also belongs to the diencephalon, and it it actually belongs to the epithalamus. So we had the thalamus here that was one part of the diencephalon and this part over here is the epithalamus and pineal gland is part of it this place over here is called the habenular trigone and this hole over here that is opened that you could go inside is actually the third ventricle if you go inside this third ventricle you would go through some kind of channel or something like that and it's called the cerebral aqueduct and you would exit here in the fourth ventricle I will show you that now from the if, if, if we make a cut here okay if you make a if you make a cut and then look at it from the side this is how it would look like Okay, so imagine that we took this part of the brain off and we were looking from this direction and we were able to see the third ventricle. Okay, let me let me remove let me move all this so it it would be it will be more clear, okay? We were able to see the third ventricle here. You can see it. And we're looking from this direction here and this is the third ventricle okay if you go this way you would come here in the fourth ventricle of the brain this is the same way if you would go here through the brain mass actually through the cerebral aqueduct and you get outside here in the fourth ventricle now I hope you understand how this aqueduct connects these two ventricles and now I will illustrate what I told you in the beginning. I will illustrate the way the cerebellum is attached to the brain stem. Here you can see it. This is the cerebellum. Actually one part of the hemisphere of the cerebellum. And if we look closer the cerebellum, I illustrated some of its structures. As you can see those fibers that are going through here, this is how they are attached here. Okay, on onto the uh, this is how the cerebellum is attached. And next thing I want to point out is the uh, dentate nucleus here. Okay, that's the dentate nucleus. To learn more about the cerebellum and its structures, its nuclei, and and, and the way it, it it coordinates our movements, you should check out my website and purchase my software flashbrainanatomy.com